Welcome to the Christian Woman Leadership Podcast, where we hope to inspire you to embrace your God-given gifts, skills, and passions in order to lead with confidence. We want you to remember that you are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God, and you are fully loved by Him. You have been designed on purpose by God with unique gifts and passions in order to love and lead those around you. I'm your host, Esther Littlefield, a pastor's wife, business owner, mom, and writer. And I'm Esther's co-host, Holly Kane. I'm a wife, mom, and business owner. I also write at hollycane.org, where I focus on my passion for women's ministry. Together, we chat about important issues that Christian women leaders face. In addition, we interview other women just like you who lead in various roles from church to community to business. Through this podcast, we offer you encouragement, tools, and resources to help you on your leadership journey. We are so glad you're here with us. Hi, friend, Esther here, and today I'm coming to you for another solo episode. I'm going to share with you about the journey to becoming a confident leader, and I'm hoping that by talking about the stages of confident leadership that I mentioned in the last episode, that you will have a better idea of what this means, but also how to move forward. Now, a little bit of a personal update before we jump in. I have been sick for the past few weeks, and you might notice that my voice is not the greatest, but it's Sunday afternoon and the podcast comes out on Tuesday and I really need to record. So I just want to share that in case I sound different. I'm going to do my best to record this in one take since my editor is not going to be able to edit this one for me. All right, so we've got that personal update out of the way, and I want to jump right into our topic today of the confident leader journey. To get us started, I want to invite you to go back in time with me to the very first time that I performed on stage. I sat down at the piano and nervously adjusted the music in front of me. My piano teacher stood near me for support while the principal sat near the middle of the stage. I look out over the crowd and there they were, the entire school. They sat and waited for me to begin. I didn't want to be there to begin with. I had been taking piano lessons for a while from my principal's son, and I suppose I had been doing okay, but I was deathly afraid to perform in front of people. I didn't want to get up in front of the entire school and play my piece. But they had convinced me, my piano teacher and my principal, and they believed in me. They really thought I would do great. So here I was. It was time to begin. I began playing the piece of music, and for a little while, the notes flowed freely. I hit the right keys, and I stayed focused on the music instead of all the people watching. Until that moment when I hit the wrong note. Then I froze. I couldn't figure out what to do next. Do I go back and restart that section? Do I start all the way at the beginning? Do I just jump to the next section? I couldn't move, and then it started. One snicker, followed by another. Then, laughter. I felt my chest tighten as my neck turned red, and then the redness crept up my entire face until I'm sure I looked like a frozen strawberry popsicle. That was it. I knew I was right. Why did they make me do this anyway? People can't be trusted, I thought. I told my piano teacher I didn't want to do this, and this was why. I wasn't ready. My first performance on stage was a bust, and I was pretty sure I would never do something like that again. And my friends, well, they sat right there with everyone else, laughing right along with them. Maybe they thought... I was a loser, just like I thought I was. I made the decision that day to never put myself in that position again. I didn't want to be on stage. I didn't want to be up in front of people. And don't you dare ask me to speak in front of others. But somehow, God kept putting me in situations where I needed to be in front of people, where I had to be brave even if I didn't feel confident. The next time I remember being on stage, it was my eighth grade graduation. It was just two months after my dad had been killed in a tragic car accident. 
And now I had to get up in front of not just my classmates, but all of their family and friends. And I had to give a speech. That one went only slightly better than the first attempt at stage performance. I didn't freeze up and completely bail on the speech, but I did have to stand on a stool behind the podium because I'm so short, and my legs shook the entire time. It was scary, but I survived. Now, maybe you have had similar experiences. Growing up, maybe there were times when you felt completely unqualified to do what you were doing, or maybe you messed up and completely embarrassed yourself. Everyone stared at you because you said or did the wrong thing at the wrong time. Tell me I am not alone. (laughs) But maybe you are still dealing with some of those feelings today. Maybe you still feel like your voice doesn't matter, or that if you share your thoughts, someone will laugh and make fun of you. Maybe you walk into a room and you automatically feel like an outsider because you don't have that tribe, or your clothes aren't cool enough, or you just feel different from everyone else in the room. Perhaps you have thought about trying something new, but the fear of what will happen grips you and holds you back from jumping in. What is this about, my friends? Why do we struggle with this from childhood and carry it into our adult years? Well, there's a few names for it, and I'm sure you've heard these things before. Some of us call it insecurity. We might say it's a lack of self-esteem, self-doubt, fear, uncertainty, or a lack of confidence. What I'm concerned about is what happens when we live in this place, when we decide we are stuck and there's nothing we can do and things won't probably ever change. What happens when we stay in this place? Well, you don't say hi to the new neighbor because you're not sure what she will think. Maybe she already has a bunch of friends and she has no interest in getting to know you. You don't start that blog that you've been thinking about because people think, because people might think you're a bad writer. You don't invite that new family at church over to your house for lunch because you're worried that your house is too small or too messy. Now, perhaps you're listening to this podcast and you're thinking, I've never felt that way. If that's the case, awesome. And you're welcome to turn off this episode right now. But if you have ever felt these things or experienced anything that I've mentioned, I want you to know you're in good company. And I'm really hoping that today's conversation will encourage you and also give you something that you can apply and help you move forward in this journey of being a confident leader. Because here's what I can tell you, despite my personality and my early experiences as a shy, insecure child, and I can assure you that that example I shared is just one small example of my childhood experiences, God has brought me on an incredible journey of becoming a leader. And it's really actually hard to believe that he's allowed me to do the things that he has set before me. God has given me opportunities to lead Bible studies and small groups, to speak at and lead marriage retreats with my husband, to speak on stage with my husband at church, to speak at women's events, and even start this podcast where I get to connect with you. And that last one, quite honestly, is one of my most favorite things I have ever been able to do. But more than all of those things that I've been able to do on the outside, what's more important is what God has done on the inside. You see, God has given me confidence, and that confidence is what has enabled me to take some of these bigger, scarier steps. And I believe he can give you confidence, too. But it doesn't happen overnight, and it doesn't happen by taking some magic pill or just believing in yourself more or saying the right mantras or reading the right books. Confidence comes, I believe, as a result of surrendering to God's truth and then 
walking in that truth and taking action based on that truth. You can hear more about my thoughts on this in episode six, the importance of leading with confidence. And you can also find out why confidence matters for you in your leadership in our last episode, 67, where I talk about the reasons that confidence will make you a more effective leader. So today, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about this idea that becoming a confident leader is a journey. And I believe for most of us, it happens in stages. So I told you in the last episode, we would be talking about this idea of stages of confident leadership. And I'm going to jump into that, but I do want to give you a couple caveats before I explain the stages of leadership. The first one is this. While I am going to talk about these stages in a linear step-by-step way, I am fully aware that this is not exactly how the path of leadership looks. In fact, it's usually a lot messier than this. We want it to, or at least I prefer it to look like a staircase. Step one, do this, and then move up to step two, and then a few more things, and now you're on to step three. But instead, the reality is that it often feels a lot more like a roller coaster, where sometimes you are at the highest point, and a few moments later, you are at the bottom. And once in a while, it feels like you just got whiplash because something changed so quickly and you did not see it coming. However, I do believe that the stages of leadership I'm going to share can be a helpful framework for you in looking at where you are in general. It may not be precise and it probably is not a picture of exactly your entire experience of leadership, but it will be a general snapshot of where you're at right now. All right, caveat number two is that your stage of confident leadership does not define who you are. Let me say that again. Your stage of confident leadership does not define who you are, and it is not your identity. So what I want you to think about this framework with is it's kind of like a personality test. A personality test doesn't tell you everything about you. It doesn't create your identity, but it can give you some information and a lens to look through, which will help you to be more aware of your situation as well as how to move forward. So likewise, with these stages of leadership, this is simply a tool to help you determine where you're at right now and how you can maybe move forward and take your next steps. But let's remember someone at stage five is not more valuable than someone at stage one. So let me finally say this. The five stages of confident leadership is something that I've developed based on what I've learned, what I've seen in my own life, what I've seen in other women that I admire as well as have worked with. It's not an exhaustive view of leadership, but again, I hope that it's a helpful perspective and framework for you as a Christian woman in leadership. All right, so are you ready to dive in to the stages of confident leadership? I'm going to give you a broad overview of each stage, and this will potentially allow you to determine your stage just by listening. But I also have a free quiz to help you, and you can get that at estherlittlefield.com slash leader quiz. I will put the link in the show notes. So all you have to do is go into your app that you're listening to this on or to my website and just click on that link and it will take you to the quiz. This will give you your results and it will also give you a suggested next step. And if you put your email in at the end, I will send you a full email with your stage and some bonus next steps for you, as well as a PDF download to show you the five stages. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in to stage one. Stage one is the reluctant leader. I have come up with names for each of these stages, just so it sounds like we're talking about a real person, but just so you know, these are completely fictional, made up people. All right, we're going to call this one Reluctant Rebecca. Rebecca struggles to believe that she can even be a leader. She might be like, 
Lori Wilhite in episode 66, where she is actually in a leadership role, but she's not sure she wants that title. Rebecca isn't always sure of God's love for her, and she's not sure if he has a purpose for her life. She might not think that anyone is actually following her or that she has any kind of influence. Rebecca also isn't super aware of her personality, her strengths, or her gifts, or and she can't seem to think of any dreams or passions that she has. She believes in God, but she's not sure how to figure out what he's calling her to do, and she's scared to take any steps outside of what she is already doing. Rebecca usually does not speak up, even on important things, because she's not sure what anyone will think or if they will want to listen. So I have a question for you. Does any of this sound familiar? This is where I lived for much of my life. Yes, I had leadership potential. You know, I was called bossy as a kid, and I was often one of the kids coordinating all the activities in the backyard. But for much of my life, I struggled with that insecurity. I didn't know when to speak up, and I certainly did not call myself or consider myself a leader. So if reluctant Rebecca sounds familiar, don't worry, friend. You can move past this. You can get past this stage. And I know because I have been there. I want you to think about this. You can actually take your reluctance and turn it into readiness. So I want you to start by really digging into God's word and seeking to understand what he says about himself and about his love for you. All right, so let's go on to stage two. This is the hesitant leader. We're going to call this gal Hesitant Hannah. So Hannah wants to be a leader, but she has no idea where to begin. She knows God loves her, but she struggles to remember this from from time to time. And she wants to follow his leading, but she really hasn't figured out how to listen to his voice. Hannah knows she has a purpose and gifts, but she hasn't really figured out how to discern what they are. She also realizes that her personality plays a role in her leadership, but she hasn't gotten clear on who she is and how to use that knowledge to better serve others. Hannah believes that she may have some influence over others in her life, but she's not really sure the best way to connect with those people or to make a difference for them. Hannah does want to take steps towards what God has for her, but she's feeling pretty nervous about it. She often has ideas and thoughts she wants to share, but she struggles to speak up and communicate them. Maybe this stage is resonating with you right now. If so, that's awesome. It means you're ready to step into the role of leader. You can take that hesitance and turn it into hope. Okay, let's go on to stage three. Stage three is what I'm calling an active leader. And we're going to call this woman Active Abby. So Abby is a leader, but she doesn't always feel confident. She knows God loves her and she rests in that love some of the time, but she still struggles with fighting off the lies once in a while. Abby knows that she has some people following her and she's doing her best to learn how to lead them well. She's starting to get clear on her purpose, and she's in the midst of uncovering her gifts and strengths, although she isn't fully using them yet. Abby has started to understand how she is wired and the impact that this can make on her leadership. Abby has begun speaking up when she feels it's important, though she still wonders if she said the right thing at times. She spends time seeking God on a regular basis, but she's not always sure if she's hearing from him. Despite this, she is beginning to take small steps towards the things that God has put on her heart. Does Abby sound familiar to you? Maybe you're in this stage of leadership and you're ready to dig deeper. I'm excited to see where God is going to take you. Okay, stage four is the purposeful leader. We're going to call this woman Purposeful Patty. Patty is a leader who is starting to feel confident in her role. She believes God loves her, and she rests in his love most of the time. 
She seeks him on a regular basis, and she's starting to discern his voice. Patty has influence over others around her, and she is learning to love and lead them well. She's beginning to walk in her purpose and use her gifts, her strengths, her passions to serve God and others. She has begun to share her thoughts and ideas, even when she's not sure how it will go. Patty has also started to take scary steps in the direction that God is leading her, even when she can't see the full path ahead of her. Are you a purposeful Patty? If so, that is amazing. I love seeing God using women, and you are right there in the throes of leadership. So keep moving forward. Okay, we're on to stage five, and this is the last stage that I'm going to share. And this is the confident leader. I'm going to call her Confident Chloe. So Chloe is a leader, and she is confident in her role. She knows God loves her. She rests in his love almost all the time, and she focuses on helping others to rest and understand his love as well. She seeks God regularly, and she has learned how to discern his voice, and she is actively following his leading. Chloe has a clear picture of who she is leading, and she seeks to help them understand and experience God's love. She knows what her purpose is, and she is thriving in it. Chloe is also very familiar with her gifts, her strengths, her personality, and she uses them in her role as a leader. In group situations, Chloe is comfortable sharing her ideas and input, even when it might be contradictory to the rest of the group. She has learned to communicate her ideas respectfully and thoughtfully. Chloe also takes risks in order to follow God's leading, even when it makes her uncomfortable or it doesn't make sense to herself or others. So does confident Chloe sound like you? If so, that is awesome. I want to tell you, though, that even though this is stage five, it does not mean that you have arrived as a leader. And it doesn't mean that there are not going to be challenges that you will face at this stage. At each stage of this confident leader journey, you're going to have certain things that are challenges. So the important thing here to remember, especially for those in in stage five, but for all of us really, is that your confidence comes from God and not from yourself. So the minute you start thinking that you have got it together and that you know what you're doing and you start having that seed of pride in your heart, then that is a danger zone. So just keep that in mind. All right, so you might be wondering what is next. Now we have talked about the five stages of leadership, and maybe it was really easy for you to identify as we talked through the examples, which stage you're currently in. Or maybe you just have no idea and you need a little help. Either way, I want to encourage you to take the free quiz that I mentioned earlier, because when you take the quiz, again, you're going to get the results, and you'll also be able to find out that recommended next step for you. And like I said before, if you put in your email, I will send you an email that will give you a PDF download with the stages, some bonus steps, and just some other thoughts and encouragement for you around this whole issue. As we mentioned at the beginning, leadership and this process of going through the stages is not necessarily linear. And so once you reach a certain stage, it's not always going to be static and you may not always necessarily move to the next stage automatically. So keep in mind that this is a journey and there are going to be ups and downs. I don't love that I struggled with insecurity when I was younger. But it's part of my journey. It's part of what brought me to where I am today. And without the hard parts of our stories, we would not have as much appreciation for what what God has done. So no matter where you're at right now, remember that God loves you. He has a purpose for you and that there are people ready to be impacted by you. I believe that our enemy wants to keep you from taking your next steps. 
But let's not let him do that, my friend. Let's begin believing the truth of what God says and the truth of who he is. And then let's walk in that truth. If you want to get started toward understanding what it means to lead with confidence, I want to remind you, go back and listen to episode six. It's one of the very first episodes I did, and I can tell you, I I probably should redo it, but I believe still in the content, and I want you to go listen if you haven't. You'll find the link in the show notes, and in that episode, I share about the three core components or phases of leading with confidence that will help you work through this. And just briefly, they are love, live, and lead. And so I'll explain that in that episode. And if you want to go further into that, I want to invite you to check out the Confident Leader Path, which is part of the Confident Leader Club. And in there, I am working through these three phases of the Confident Leader Path and how you can actually work on changing your beliefs, understanding the truth, and taking action steps towards becoming a confident leader. And of course, within the club, we also have support for women at all stage of leadership. So I would love to, for you to come check it out. Um, if it's not open currently, get on the wait list so that you can join us the next time we open the doors. Finally, friend, I just want to thank you again for being a part of the Christian Woman Leadership Podcast. We would not have this podcast without you, without you listening, without you sharing, without you taking action. And, you know, like I said at the beginning, one of my favorite things that God has allowed me to do is this podcast. And so I just want to take a moment to thank you for listening and for being a part of this experience with me. And when you take that quiz, if you go back and take the Confident Leader Stages quiz, you're going to get an invite to be a part of our Facebook group as well. So go ahead, take the quiz, join our Facebook group so we can continue the conversation in there. All right, friend, thank you for listening to this episode. If you would like the show notes and the links to everything I discussed in this episode, head over to estherlittlefield.com slash episode 68. And there you can grab the links for the previous episodes I mentioned, the quiz and everything else. So head over there, grab those links, and I will talk to you next time. Thanks for joining us on the Christian Woman Leadership Podcast. If you enjoyed this conversation, come and join us in our private Facebook community. We would love to get to know you better so that we can make sure the podcast is providing what you need. Plus, you can share your questions and ideas, and you'll be surrounded by incredible Christian women leaders. To join the group, visit estherlittlefield.com slash group. Now don't forget, your leadership matters, and it's time for you to embrace your gifts and lead with confidence.